Hi guys, this is John from Eatristics University, and this is Cured Sausage 201, Functions of Fat. Now when we say cured sausage, we're really talking about a really wide range of meat products. Snack sticks, summer sausages, hot dogs, bolognese, and salamis are all a part of that. Now all of those have a lot more similarities than you might think based on the taste, size, and textures of the products. They have similar grinding, mixing, and smoking requirements, and they all have mostly the same ideal fat content. Now for all of these products, aside from some specialty salamis, you wanna be in the 70 to 30 lean to fat ratio. Now fat has a few different functions in sausage making, but two of the most important are the taste it imparts and its effect on the texture. Now pork fat is generally what we recommend as it has a creaminess to it that most other sausages just aren't gonna match. You can use other fats like beef is a popular one if you want, but in the end you might not end up with a product that's just as good as it could be. Pork fat also happens to be really white and where beef, sheep, buffalo, they tend to have a little bit of yellowness to it. So pork fat's also gonna give you a better looking product. Now fat adds flavor in two ways. It obviously has its own taste, but it also helps coat the mouth. And that allows seasonings and other flavors to linger a little bit longer. Now pork fat starts to melt at 82 degrees. So when you're eating a hot cured sausage, that fat's already melted and it's self-explanatory on how it's gonna coat your mouth. But what about when you're eating a cold summer sausage or snack sticks? That's either at or below room temperature even. Now the mechanical action of chewing is gonna play a really large part in that and your saliva does as well. Now if you don't believe me, take a bite of some cold summer sausage, snack stick or salami, start chewing and then pay attention to how the roof of your mouth and your inside of your cheeks start feeling. You have like a greasy little bit of coating on there. It's really interesting. So that's just gonna allow any seasoning you put in there to stay in your mouth longer and you'll just experience it a little bit stronger. Now, left to itself, fat's not gonna mix with water. Think of what happens when you pour olive oil or really any type of oil into water. It's gonna float to the top. No matter how long you leave it there, it's not gonna mix by itself since the water molecules are more attracted to each other than they are to the oil. So this is why mixing and getting really good protein extraction is so important. If you try to make a sausage with too low of a fat content, you're gonna end up with a dry and crumbly product as the fat isn't there to help bind the proteins. Now when we say 30% fat content for sausages, a lot of people tend to balk at that and think it's too high. Well, if you've ever bought a sausage from a store, I can almost guarantee you that it's at least 30%. And in all honesty, it's probably closer to 40 or in some even 50%. This is because fat is inexpensive and it gives good taste, meaning that that allows the company making the sausage to use less seasoning. And do you really think they're gonna use more expensive lean meat, which is gonna require more seasoning to flavor? No, they're gonna go with what's gonna give you the best taste for the least amount of money. Now, some people do have legitimate reasons that they wanna cut down an amount of fat they eat. In my opinion, the vast majority of the US would be better off worrying less about the amount of fat they eat and more about the amount of processed foods and carbohydrates they intake. If you're looking for a lower fat content sausage, it definitely can be done. I've made a lot of sausage just out of chicken breast alone. If you're wanting to do this, I'd absolutely recommend that you use cold phosphate to increase the water holding capacity of the meat and super bind or carrot fiber to help with moisture and binding. You'll also want to grind it in extra time to really break the product down. This ends up giving you a texture that's a little bit closer to a hot dog, but it's definitely preferable to a dry and crumbly product. One thing to keep in mind if you are using cold phosphate, you cannot use encapsulated citric acid. They try to do different things to the pH and it, to some extent they'll cancel each other out. So just stay away from that. As always, remember to like, comment, and subscribe and visit waltonsinc.com and meatchistics.com to find everything about the meat. Thanks for watching. I'm John with Meatchistics University and I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe to Walton's YouTube channel to watch more amazing videos or shop at waltonsinc.com to find everything about the meat. Check out our latest sales and giveaway video here or watch another hand-picked video by clicking here.